Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how I can take amazing photographs with the light trails left behind moving cars. It's a very cool technique that you can use in order to spice up your nighttime street photography. And I'm talking about images looking like this. Pretty cool, huh? And if you're thinking, well, I'm just gonna take a long exposure and that's it. Well, that's not it. Long exposure is definitely a part of this method, but there is more to it. There is something you can do really make those images way more impressive in a program like Adobe Photoshop, for instance. So, if you want to learn how to do it and follow along, don't stop watching the video. Alright, so I have actually recorded an entire section in the field when I was taking my photographs, but I did that beside a very busy highway and I'm not gonna torture you with the quality of the audio from this recording because it is just terrible. So instead, I went back to the car and I'm just gonna run you quickly what I did in the field. I went up to a middle of an overpass above a highway and the composition that I was trying to capture was that the both sides of the highway will act as leading lines symmetrically converging towards the center of the frame. So that was the idea. I had my EOS R set up on the, on the railing, uh, on a gorilla pod, and I was taking a series of long exposures, but not too long. So the first instinct in order to capture a photograph like this may be to open the shutter for as long as possible, let's say two minutes, maybe three minutes, to catch as many light trails as you can onto a single exposure. But the problem with that is twofold. So the first problem is that if you have such a long exposure and a large truck drives by, it may actually shake the entire overpass that you have your tripod on, cause camera shake and basically ruin your exposure. And secondly, the lights that you are capturing are pretty bright despite the fact that it is night, so you may probably need some kind of an ND filter or something, which is another investment, another piece of kit that you have to carry, remember, to mount on your camera, etc, etc. So instead, what I did is I plugged in my external intervalometer to my camera and I have taken a series of 20 shots. Each of them was 10 seconds long at aperture f4 and at ISO 200. And the idea behind it is that if one of those images comes out blurry because there was a large truck and it's shaking my camera, it's not a problem. I'm just not gonna use this exposure and I'm gonna pick the sharpest 10 and then shove them into Photoshop into a single document and stack them together in a way that all of the light trails get sort of added up onto a final image. And don't worry, there is no complicated techniques, there is no masking, no other plugins, just a very simple tool in Photoshop to do that. So I actually have my computer right here, so let's jump straight into Photoshop and let me show you how I can produce the final image. So we are here in Photoshop and I have imported 10 images right here. You can see they look something like this. And the simplest way to end up with all of your images in a single Photoshop document is just that in Adobe Lightroom, you can select all of your images, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And that's how you end up with all of the images in a single Photoshop document, like I have right here. So here at the bottom right corner, we have all of our images and we're going to select all of them, but the last one, the one at the bottom. So click on the first one, then scroll down and holding the shift key, click on this one. Then go to the blending mode menu and change lighten. And what the lighten blending mode does, it is basically taking the brightest of the two pixels when blending layers. So obviously the trace of lights are brighter than the dark road with no light trails. So it will just pick up the light trace for all of the subsequent images and stack them onto the base image, the one at the bottom, to produce an image where all of the light trails are present on a single exposure. Pretty cool, huh? So right now we can see that we have actually caught some star trails and in order to fix this, we can actually throw all of those layers, but the last one into a group. So just with all of them selected, hit this key to group them and then take the rectangular mark queue, which I have active right here and draw a rough mask that looks something like this and then just add a layer mask to the group by clicking this button. Right here, we obviously see this hard edge right here but to fix this, we can double click on the mask and feather it out a bunch, something like this. And then the hard edge is gone. And this is how the final image looks. Pretty easy, huh? So let's go outside and let's record the outro for this video. So that's basically it for today. What do you think about the final result? Leave a comment down below and let me know. 
By the way, if you are wondering how come I have such a cool lighting here in this kind of a vloggy situation, even though it's pitch dark outside, I will be actually coming up with a video on my channel about this exact thing, which is nighttime vlogging. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on that. But that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button down below. Also, like I said, consider subscribing to the channel because there will be more videos like this. And I usually make photography tutorials, filmmaking tutorials, drone flying tutorials, and sometimes vlogs and travel videos. So if you're interested in any of that, you know what to do. But that's it for now. See you next time. Have a good day or night and bye-bye.